Hello, this is Eric Michael Lloyd. I wanted to read an article regarding um, topics in psychology of law or just the law in general. It has to do with uh, homicide rates in different countries. This is from the International Statistics on Crime and Justice. European Institute for Crime Prevention and Control affiliated with the United Nations. International Statistics on Crime and Justice edited by S. Herendorf M. Heiskinen S. Malby. European Institute for Crime Prevention and Control, affiliated with the United Nations. This is in Finland, Finland, Helsinki, Helsinki, Finland, United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime, Vienna, Austria. The Uni Publication Series number 64. It's by Stefan Herendorf. Marku Heiskinen, Stephen Malby, International Statistics on Crime and Justice, Helsinki, 2010. Disclaimers, the report hasn't been formally edited. The contents of this publication do, ne do not necessarily reflect the views or policies of the United Nations, UNODC, or contributory organizations and neither do they imply any endorsement. The designations employed and the presentation of material in this publication do not imply the expression of any opinion whatsoever on the part of the United Nations or UNODC concerning the legal status of any country, territory, territory or city or its authorities or concerning the delimitation of its frontiers or boundaries. Introduction. Kauko Aroma. Um, it's on page five, Homicide. Page seven by Stephen Malby. Uh, next up is Trends in Police Reported Crime. That's page 21, Marku Ice Kennan. Number three, Drug Crime. That's page 49, Stephen Malby. Number four, Complex Crimes. That's on page 65, Anna. Al Vazi del Frate. Number five, responses of the criminal justice system. Number page on on page eighty seven, Paul Smith and Stefan Herendorf. Number six, attributes of criminal justice systems, resources, performance, and punitivity. It's on page one thirteen, by Stefan Herendorf and Paul Smith. Number seven, trends in world prison population. Page 153, Roy Walmsley. Crime and criminal justice statistics challenges. Page 167, Anna Alvazi del Frate. Introduction, Kauko Aroma, the United Nations surveys on crime trends and the operations criminal justice systems denoted UNCTS below for the sake of brevi brevity, collect basic information on the reported crime and on resources of criminal justice system in the member states. Its mandate being Europe and North America, H-E-U-N-I, HEUNI, has analyzed and reported on the surveys for this part of the world from the very beginning. For other regions of the world, such reporting has not been achieved. The present volume, prepared in partnership of the UNI and the UNODC, for the first time pulls together global responses to the UNCTS questionnaire. The most recent one included here is UNCTS 10 that allows the analysis of data up in up 
to 2006. In the current report, the improvement introduced in the previous one, looking only at Europe and North America, Roma and Heiskanen, 2008, is retained. Also this time, the report addresses a time period of about 10 years in order to provide more stability to the situation assessment. In, glo in a global report, it is more difficult to keep the 10-year framework since many countries have not responded regularly, but data gaps are frequent. In this case, the basic solution has been that data for 1996, 2000, and 2006 are used for the 10-year, actually 11-year perspective to be covered. For many countries, this could be achieved. For many others, one or more of these years had to be com complemented by data for adjacent years because the country response for one or several of the required years had not been made available. Reporting for more recent years has not been possible. This may not be satisfactory to those who require more up-to-date information. However, the timelessness of large-scale comparative data has always been a significant problem and remains one. First of all, statistical data on crime and criminal justice are typically not available until after the relevant year. Country-level data on police-recorded crime are often released relatively soon after the shift of the year, but statistics on later stages of the criminal justice procedure are more delayed. Next, disseminating the UNCTS data collection instrument to member states, collecting and validating the responses, drafting a reporting plan, and creating a database necessary for the analysis, analyzing the data and writing up the report are stages in the process that cannot be avoided, and they do consume time. As a consequence, reports of this kind are always providing results that do not refer to the current year or the previous one. It will shed light on the situation three, four years back in time. So far, ways to introduce significant improvements to this dilemma have not been found. For many, a delay of three to four years would seem to be too long for any up-to-date assessment of the current situation, whether globally or for one reason only, even considering that experience has shown that crime data of the kind analyzed here usually do not vary radically over short time periods. A marked improvement would, however, require much more advanced statistical systems in many member states and a much higher priority to be given to the UN data collection exercise than is the case today. Another even more disturbing observation that has been repeated, made repeatedly is that many member states continue to be unable to answer the UN CTS questionnaire at all or are only able to provide a partial response. This state of affairs is in part due to a very basic reason. Some are, or all of the required data are not available. However, less excusable is the situation for many other countries that are known to possess the required data but do not respond. For those in need of improving their statistics, the UN ODC has been working on a support and assistance approach, which is also bearing fruit in the long term. Those member states that, for a multiplicity of reasons, have failed to respond to the surveys altogether, they are in the possession of the relevant data. We take this task more seriously in the future. This would also be in their interest as they would benefit from knowing their position in a global data set, a global data set. Also others in the global community would be keen to know how many others have been doing, how others have been doing in core issues of crime and criminal justice. Some of the unavoidable delay problems have been partially resolved by the UN ODC in that they publish some data from the country responses on their website as soon as they are made available by the member states. The advantage is that the delay is as short as it can be under the circumstances where national responses are the, the basis. Of 
course, before there is a national response, nothing can be made available. It is therefore of paramount importance that delays caused by member states are minimized. The drawback of the UN ODC solution is that the information on the website is not and cannot be validated and processed, leaving the potential user without expert assistance when trying to interpret the data. <clears throat> if it is highly problematic and perhaps not advisable at all to publish raw data of this kind without adequately adequate commentary regarding known problems related to its validity and interpretation problems. The 10-year time span applied should illustrate that for many criteria, it is often of no massive importance that the data are never fully up to date. Many of the trends displayed can be seen to be rather stable, meaning that simple basic indicators of features of recorded crime and operations of the criminal justice system are often of a rather robust nature. Consequently, a large proportion of the presented data and findings, even if outdated, are unlikely to change significantly from one year to another. Consequently, the current day in the timeliness of the presented data is mostly of no major concern. The most obvious exceptions are countries undergoing irregular rapid transformations. For such countries, however, a UN CTS is hardly of immediate interest anyway. <clears throat> undergoing irregular rapid transformations. Okay. Look at the lack of impact reporting at the national level. We have not reproduce the data collection instruments in this value. Due to various changes over time, each UN CTS questionnaire is slightly different. The questionnaires can be found in all UN languages at the address uh, written below, at the link there. The report compromises eight chapters. They are designed to deal with all central issues addressed in the questionnaires. First, police rec recorded crime is discussed separate chapters on homicides, chapter one, other police reported crimes, chapter two, and drug-related crime and drug trafficking, chapter three. Also, complex crimes are analyzed separately, such as organized crime and trafficking in human beings, chapter four. Such offenses have played a marginal role in transitional crime statistics, and in order to improve the relevance of the data on such offenses, New solutions need to be developed. Chapter 5, shifting to the next stage of the criminal justice system, presents data on responses of the criminal justice system, including an innovation where attrition issues are being discussed. A parallel issue to the responses of the criminal justice system are resources and performance. These are discussed in Chapter 6, where also a discussion on punitive punitivity of criminal justice systems is included. Next, a presentation on prison populations of the world closes the analysis of the criminal justice data. The last chapter finally discusses challenges with crime and criminal justice statistics, arguing for the importance of further improvements in the area. The objective of this report is to show potential users of international crime data, what they could learn from these mistakes, and provide guidance as to restrictions, pitfalls, and strength of the unique set of data that is now available thanks to the countries that have responded to the UN surveys. Stephen Malby, Abstract. This, crap, this chapter presents available data on the crime of intentional homicide intentional killing of a person by another. As one of the most effectively recorded crimes, law enforcement data on intentional homicide is typically more readily available than for other crimes. As such, rates of intentional homicide per 100,000 population have sometimes been used as a proxy for levels of violent crime or even overall crime. Data from both law enforcement and public health sources may be combined to increase data availability and geographic coverage. 
Results suggest that the highest homicide levels are found in the Americas and Africa region, with the lowest homicide levels generally in countries in Europe. For those countries where trend data is available, the majority show decreasing or stable homicide rates, with the exception of a number of countries, predominantly in the Americas, that show high and increasing rates. Such increases may be linked to the challenges of organized crime, drug trafficking, and gang activity. Significant data challenges remain, however, particularly in Africa, where criminal justice data on intentional homicide is, is presently very limited. Introduction. The intentional killing of a person by another, intentional homicide, represents the most serious end of the spectrum of violent crime. Recent attention on the issue of armed violence and the growing importance of homicide as an indicator has resulted in increased efforts to improve statistic, statistics at international, regional, and national levels. The results presented in this chapter derive primarily from criminal justice data. Despite varying definitions, homicide is perhaps the most widely collected and reported crime in law enforcement and criminal justice statistics. Due to its seriousness, the killing of a person tends to be recorded more effectively than other crimes. Nonetheless, the challenges of cross-national comparability are considerable. National legal systems may have different thresholds for categorizing a death as intentional homicide. Whilst Intentional homicide usually requires that the perpetrator purposefully intends to cause the death or serious injury of a victim. In some countries, a death that occurs in the act or attempted act of another serious crime may also qualify as intentional homicide or murder. Infanticide, assault leading to death and killings carried out by law enforcement officers, acting legitimately in the line of duty or not, all may or may not be included in police recorded statistics. In addition, differences in police recording practices, such as differences in counting units, offenses, suspects, or cases, whether or not attempted homicide or non-intentional homicides are included in published figures, and the point in the investigation at which a suspicious death is classified as homicide all vary as between countries. Moreover, as forms of organized criminality and state insecurity become increasingly intertwined, the line between violent deaths that occur in armed conflict and those that can be labeled crime is often blurred. <coughs> Acts which are likely to be recorded by law enforcement and criminal justice institutions as intentional homicide can take place in a wide range of contexts, including the home, family, social, or domestic setting. In the course of burglary, theft, or robbery, or associated with gang, organized, or drug-related crime. Combining data sources. This chapter differs from others in this publication in that for criminal justice information, it draws on data wider than that reported through the United Nations Survey of Crime Trends and Operations of Criminal Justice Systems, UNCTS. Whilst UNCTS data is included in the analysis, in order to provide as wide a geographic coverage as possible, the chapter uses data from other available criminal justice sources. These include other cross-national data sources, such as data collected and published by the Statistical Office of the U European Communities, Eurostat, and the United Nations Children Fund, UNICEF, the International Police Organization, Interpol, and the Observatorio Centroamericano, Sobre Valencia, Ocavi, or Ocavi. The analysis also makes use of data available at the national level, including that published on 
National Police, Ministry of Interior, and Ministry of Justice websites. Priority was given to data available at the regional or international level over national data due to the fact that cross-national data collections such as the UN, CTS, and Eurostat make use of standardized definitions of intentional homicide and are usually supported by extensive metadata that allows the user to better understand the content of reported numbers. Although this chapter derives its results primarily from such multi-source police recorded crime statistics, the fact of a death means that homicides are usually processed both by the medical system and the criminal justice system, creating two potential sources of administrative statistics. These two systems measure subtly different phenomena, and while figures can be expected to show reasonable levels of agreement, they are unlikely to generate identical numbers. In order to provide as complete a picture as possible of the level and trend of homicides in the world, and for comparative purposes, this chapter provides data available from public health sources alongside those from criminal justice. The public health sources used are predominantly cross-national, including data published by the World Health Organization and the Pan American Health Organization, PAHO. Public health statistics on intentional homicide typically consist of data recorded under the International Classification of Disease, ICD-10 codes, corresponding to injuries inflicted by another person with intent to injure or kill by any means. For a death to be classified in this category, there must be sufficient evidence for a medical professional to determine that the cause of death was assault and not an accident or self-harm. Whether from criminal justice or public health sources, it must be remembered that official statistics rarely capture the number of actual criminal events that have occurred. Homicide can be reported by relatives and witnesses, but obviously cannot be measured through reports by victims. The quality of homicide figures is also affected by approaches to case recording and the capacity of national institutions to gather data and accurately record events. The capacity gap between developed and developing countries particularly affects the cross-national comparison of police recorded crime statistics, with the result that administrative statistics are not a particularly strong basis for the study of cross-national differences in criminal activity. As shown in this chapter, the differences between health and police statistics are especially marked in developing countries. In higher income countries, such as those in West and Central Europe, significant differences also remain for countries between police and health statistics. Such differences may be linked to limitations in the capacity of police and law enforcement agencies to identify and record homicide events and to other factors such as the lethality of assaults. Indeed, the lethality of assaults can be particularly important, an important factor in understanding, in understanding cross-national differences and long-term trends in homicides. Evidence suggests that the lethality of assaults in North America and Western Europe, for example, has dropped dramatically due to developments in medical technology and medical support services. Uh, IEB 2004, Global Homicide Levels. Data previously published by the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime suggests that approximately 49, um, 490,000 deaths from intentional homicide occurred in 2004, Geneva Declaration 2008. This represented a world average homicide rate in 2004 of 7.6 per 100,000 in the population. The data set used for this calculation focused on maximum geographic coverage at the expense of more recently available data for some countries in order to produce 
a single global set for one point in time. UNODC 2008. In contrast, this chapter takes the approach of latest available year data in order to provide as timely information as possible, whilst also maintaining wide geographic coverage. In order to represent the distribution of this nearly half a million annual homicides by regions of the world, figure one below shows the average of a limited set of countries in each subgroup, 144 countries in total, being those for which at least one criminal justice and public health value for intentional homicide are available during the period 2003 to 2008. The range of countries for which data is available for each source alone is somewhat greater and it should be noted that average rates calculated on this wider set of countries would be different. As figure one here, which is the average intentional homicide rate by subregion, latest available year, criminal justice and public health data. It has Southern Africa, Middle Africa, Eastern Africa, South America, Western Africa, Central America, the Caribbean, Eastern Europe, Southeastern Asia, Central Asia, Northern America, Western Asia, Northern Africa, Western Asia, Northern Europe, Eastern Asia, Oceania, Western Europe, East Southern Europe, and Western Unit, all in decreasing, uh, ever decreasing levels of homicide rates per 100,000 people. Note, figure one includes only those countries for which at least one criminal justice and one public health value for intentional homicide are available in the period 2003-2008. This is indicated alongside each subregion name by the number of countries included out of the total countries in the subregion. Overall, Figure one shows comparatively low homicide rate, low homicide, homo, low homicide levels in countries in Europe, Asia, and North America, with reasonable agreement between criminal justice and public health data. In contrast, both criminal justice and public health data, albeit with less agreement, indicate significantly higher rates in South America, Central America, the Caribbean, Southern Africa, and Southern Africa. Large data discrepancies remain for Middle, Western, and Eastern Africa. Substantive work on administrative data recording systems in both the criminal justice and public health fields is required in these subregions before meaningful comparisons can be made with other subregions of the world. Figure one also reveals the continued existence of significant data limitations. In particular, very few countries in Middle, West, and Eastern Africa are able to provide criminal justice data on intentional homicide. Where data is available, significant differences exist as compared with public health figures. The limitations in criminal justice data availability in Africa relative to other regions are shown in Figure 2. Figure 2, the availability of Criminal justice data on intentional homicide. Countries with, the least, with at least one criminal justice source available from 2003 to 2008. It has a figure here and has a note here. That, note the boundaries and designations used on this map do not imply endorsement or acceptance by the United Nations. For those countries where both criminal justice and public health data are available, significant differences often exist. As shown in figure one, for nine countries in Western Africa, for example, the public health average rate is 10 times that of the criminal justice average rate. <sighs> in countries in both Central America and Caribbean regions, the average rate of intentional homicide reported by criminal justice institutions is higher than that reported by public health institutions. This may be due to a number of factors. The data set 
used in figure one relies primarily on national data for countries in Central America and the Caribbean. Data published by national authorities may be less comparable than that collected through cross-national initiatives such as the UNCTS, which makes use of standard definitions and metadata. Further, with respect to the public health data, some countries in these regions have incomplete death registration data, resulting in possible undercapture of violent deaths. Finally, as shown later in this chapter, homicide rates in a number of countries in the Central America and Caribbean subregions have increased in recent years. Criminal justice data for countries in these subregions correspond to more recent years, mostly 2007 and 2008, than public health data, mostly 2003 to 2006. A combination of these factors may explain the pattern observed. The pattern of differences between criminal justice and public health data, and indeed the level of availability of criminal justice data on homicide, can be more clearly seen at the individual country level. Figures 3 to 5 represent the latest year criminal justice data available by country. Presented alongside a set of country death by violence estimates produced by the World Health Organization for the year 2004, WHO 2009, World Health Organization. Figure 3, homicide rate per 100,000 of the population, Africa region, by country, criminal justice, latest year available, public health, 2004. Countries here are South Africa, Cote de Lavore, Burundi, Sierra Leone, Democratic Republic of the Congo, I think, Angola, Zimbabwe, Central African Republic, Rwanda, Sudan, United Republic of Tanzania, Uganda, Zambia, Botswana, uh, Swaziland, Swaziland, Kenya, Ethiopia, Niger, Mozambique, Congo, Chad, Equatorial Guinea, Burkina Faso, Nigeria, Guinea Basu, Mali, Malawi, Liberia, Guinea, Gabon, Cameroon, Eritrea, Mauritania, Senegal, Gambia, Togo, Benin, Lesotho, Namibia, Madagascar, Comoros, Ghana, Cape Verde, Algeria, Sao Tom Principal, Djibouti, Seychelles, Seychelles, Somalia, Libyan Arab, Jamaharia, Jamaharia, uh, Mauritius, Tunisia, Egypt, and Morocco. Those are all, once again, in decreasing numbers from most homicides reported to least homicide reported. Intentional homicide rate per 100,000 in the population. Note, number by country name signifies year of criminal justice data. Figure 3, which I just discussed, I just read off the names for, and most to least uh, homicides per 100,000, shows clearly the extremely limited availability of police recorded data on homicide in Africa. All Of all countries in the continent, only 25 reported police recorded homicide data at the international level or make such information publicly available at the national level. This not to say this is not to say that the other countries do not record deaths that come to the attention of police or that such data is not available to law enforcement institutions and government ministries inter internally. 
The situation of data completeness and availability within the police and government institutions likely varies from country to country. Nonetheless, it is the case that although one-fifth of the world's population lives in Africa, and more than a quarter of all countries in the world are in Africa, the continent is by far the least documented region in terms of data on crime. This absence of reliable information contributes to the limited attention devoted to solving crime and safety challenges in the region. Where police recorded homicide data is available, rates per 100,000 in population are typically significantly lower than WHO 2004 estimates. With the exception of a few countries, including Egypt, Tunisia, Mauritius, Libyan, Libyan Arab, Jamahiriya, and Cape Verde, <clears throat> further research is needed to identify true underlying homicide rates in countries in Africa. WHO estimates uh, estimates of death by violence rates for the majority of countries on the continent, with the exception most mostly of countries in North Africa, are typically high, ranging from about 7 to 40 times that of the averages in Western Europe. Country information on mortality is not available for the majority of countries in Africa and public health values for these countries are mostly derived from estimates using cause of death models. WHO 2009. Only in very few countries are estimates based on cause of death registration data with complete or almost complete geographic coverage. Whilst the accuracy of the WHO estimates are unknown, at the same time, it is likely that law enforcement and criminal justice institutions in these countries do significantly undercapture levels of violent deaths. This can be due to factors including limitations in the capacity of police and law enforcement agencies to identify and record homicide events. Figure 4 shows significantly greater criminal justice data availability in the Americas, but also some significant differences at the country level as between criminal justice and public health data. As noted above, this may be due to a number of factors, including the fact that some WHO country estimates are not based on complete cause of death recording systems and the fact that a number of countries in the Americas show significantly increased homicide rates as between 2004 and 2006 and 2007. As shown later in this chapter, increasing rates may explain the significant public health and criminal justice differences for Belize, Trinidad, and Tobago, Honduras, and Jamaica in particular. Both criminal justice and public health data are clear, however, that some of the countries with the highest homicide rates in the world can be found in the Americas region, El Salvador, Guatemala, Venezuela, Honduras, Trinidad, and Tobago, and Jamaica all show police recorded homicide rates over 40 per 100,000 population. Colombia has shown declines in police recorded homicide rates in recent years and according to police data for 2008 is now well under 40 homicides per 100,000 population. WHO 2004 data for Colombia estimates a far higher figure, and this may be due to both the difference in year of measurement and the possibility that a higher proportion of conflict-related deaths, as opposed to criminal homicide, are captured by public health figures. As shown later in this chapter, a number of the countries with some of the highest homicide rates have shown significant increases in homicide rate over the last five years. Research suggests that homicide rates to intimate, family, or other close known persons trends tends to stay relatively stable or 
only change slowly over time. As such, it is likely that particularly high and increasing homicide rates in a number of countries in the Americas are due on the most part to increasing presence of organized crime, drug trafficking, and gang activity. UNODC 2007. Figure 4. Homicide rate per 100,000 in the population. America's region by country. Criminal justice, latest year available in public health, 2004. We have for the Americas, <clears throat> Colombia, El Salvador, Guatemala, Venezuela, Bolivarian Republic of oh, see that is, Jamaica, Brazil, Ecuador, Bahamas, Belize, St. Lucia, Guyana, Barbados, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Paraguay, Dominican Republic, Nicaragua, Trinidad and Tobago, Honduras, Panama, St. Kitts and Nevis, Suriname, Dominica, Mexico, Antigua and Barbuda, Argentina, Costa Rica, Cuba, United States of America, Chile, Haiti, Grenada, Uruguay, Bolivia, Peru, Canada, French Guiana, Puerto Rico, and Bermuda. Those are, once again, in uh, most to least uh, homicides, uh, intentional homicide rate per 100,000. Note, number by country name signifies year of criminal justice data. Figure 5 shows yet another different pattern to that for Africa and the Americas. Criminal justice data availability is very high with reasonable or good agreement with public health figures for the majority of countries. Notably, those countries with poorer agreement between public health figures and criminal justice data are also those with the overall higher homicide rates in the region. The link may be more than coincidental. Good agreement between data sources suggests effective administrative reporting systems. High quality crime data is in turn both a valuable tool for crime prevention and indicative of methodological and organized policy. Indeed, countries in Europe with low homicide rates under two per 100,000 in the population have generally achieved such rates through a focus on crime prevention and evidence-led policing. Overall, homicide rates in the region are relatively similar across countries, with countries in Northern and Western Europe showing rates typically under 2.5 per 100,000 in the population. In contrast, countries in Eastern Europe show rates from this level up to around 10 per 100,000. Homicide rates per 100,000 population. Europe region by country, criminal justice, latest year available, public health 2004. Russian Federation, <clears throat> this is the same stats for Europe, the European region. Russian Federation, Ukraine, Latvia, Belarus, Lithuania, Estonia, Republic of Moldova, Moldova, Albania, the former Yugoslavic Republic of Macedonia, Romania, Bulgaria, Turkey, Serbia, Finland, Hungary, Slovenia, United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, Slovakia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Croatia, Portugal, Poland, Belgium, Spain, Czech Republic, Sweden, Netherlands, Luxembourg, Iceland, Italy, Denmark, Switzerland, Greece, Malta, Norway, France, Andorra, Austria, Ireland, Germany, Cyprus, Liechtenstein, Montenegro. Once again, that's intentional homicide per 100,000 in the population, from most to least, 
Note, number of country name signifies the year of criminal justice data. That's from the World Health Organization, 2004, and criminal justice. Trends in intentional homicide. Whilst country and regional homicide rates can be used for cross-national comparison only with caution, somewhat greater confidence may be placed in the analysis of yearly trend data. As long as factors such as approaches to police data recording remain constant, then changes over time can be effectively followed, <clears throat> irrespective of absolute levels. Insofar as intentional homicide has been used as a proxy indicator for forms of violent crime, and even crime in general, such information is important in determining patterns of crime and emerging threats. The underlying database used in this chapter contains sufficient information for calculation of yearly trend data for some 88 countries in the Americas, Asia, Europe, and Oceania. This set of countries is smaller than that used in Figure 1, whilst many countries have a value of at least one recent year available. Far fewer are available to report a consistent time series. Figures 6 to 9 show average intentional homicide rates in these 88 countries, organized by sub-region. Overall averages for countries in the Americas, Asia, and Oceania Oceania and Europe regions are also known. Figure 6, the average intentional homicide rates for countries in the Americas from 2003 to 2008, as the figures here in a line graph. Weighted average of homicide rates, note, so below the graph, below the uh, data, and line graph state, uh, states, Weighted average of homicide rates in countries consistently reporting homicide for the entire period of 2003 to 2008. Basis 2003 uh, equals 100. Average intentional homicide rates for countries in Asia and Oceania 2003 to 2008. Another line graph as well. Basis 200, 2003 is equal to 100. As the years from 2003 through 2008, there's more data as well. So I'm going to leave it off right here, and I'm going to finish this section in the next video, which is uh, the trends in intentional homicide. Thank you again for your time.